ambassador to the UN. Thank you so much for being with us tonight, sir. You know, the United Nations, of course, condemning Israel today for attacking a school that they say was being used as a shelter for 3,000 Palestinians. The UN says there were no weapons at that school. Why did Israel attack? Well, first of all, we don't know who exactly attacked there. You know, we cannot give an instant answer from a, an incident which just occurred today. Uh, what we have found in terms of a general trend is that we found that there are three UNRWA schools, those are UN schools, that have had weapons in them stored. I'm talking about rockets stored in these UN facilities in the last few days and weeks. And therefore, we don't know if this is just another case or not. We do suspect that there was a firefight in the area. We know that both sides were firing mortars, uh, which of course are explosive shells. And um, yet, whose mortar exactly hit, I can't say. This is a murky battle. And to make a call as to what's the reason for a particular um, explosion or a particular tragic result mm -hmm. is a little premature. I understand your point that there was a there was a fight nearby, and that therefore it's it's not only unclear who may have struck this particular school. Although again, I will say the UN did uh, say their preliminary analysis was that it was Israel, but um, I understand that you're saying it's not yet sure who it might have been. But in the vicinity, That's if right. there is fighting, why why would Israel believe that 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 it's okay, that it's justifiable to fight near a shelter? for 3,000 civilians, knowing that there would be the risk then that this facility could be struck. I mean, the UN says they gave the Israeli Defense Forces the coordinates for this school to make sure uh, Israel did not strike 17 times. Well, the general approach of Israel has to be stated here. You know, what we're facing here in the Gaza Strip are rocket attacks against Israeli cities and villages. And those rocket attacks are coming from heavily populated areas that are placed, uh, the, the, the launch points, the storage areas are all placed in populated areas by Hamas. Let's try and separate the civilian population as best we can from the military capability of Hamas. So how do you go about making that separation if Hamas is mixing them up? You start out, of course, with leaflets. You move quickly to radio programs. You break into Hamas's radio station with electronic uh, methods. You uh, reach people on their cell phones. You send them text messages, their personal phones. You uh, send them all kinds of warnings to get out of an area. Generally, it works, although Hamas is telling so the population, when the Israelis talk to you, don't leave your home. But, but here's, here's my question on that. I mean, you're talking about uh, an area of desperate poverty, uh, incredibly densely populated. Um, obviously, you're trying leaflets as well as cell phone warnings because a lot of people may not even have access to all of the technology. I, I see your point. But when you give them warning and you say go, where are they supposed to go to? The borders are closed. They can't come to Israel. They can't go to Egypt. That they can't go in the sea. Where are they supposed to go, Dory? Well, that is the right question. I'm glad you asked that. Because, you know, I asked from the Army for a copy of these leaflets that are put in these areas. And if you look at the leaflet, they're in Arabic. They have a map of where the particular area is located in Gaza. And then they have usually a red uh, arrow pointing to where the population has to move. You have to indicate to people on the map, in a radio broadcast, in a special text message that you might send them, or in a cell phone communication, you have to move from here to there. If you don't do that, you're putting them in an impossible position. But well, again, where's the there? The I mean, but that's my question. Where's the there? Because the shelters are these UN shelters. They say that Israel struck them six times. I mean, where is the there? Is it just a red arrow over there, or is it a specific place that you're going to guarantee is safe? No, you mention a specific, specific area that you have to make sure there are no military operations there and those people are okay. Now, what happens in other parts of the Gaza Strip when you have an army operating against Hamas? You know, you, you have exchanges of fire, you have all kinds of things going on, but in general, you're trying to protect the population. All right, thank you very much, Dory Gold.